Hey everybody, Josh from Populi here, and nobody wants to admit it, but we need to talk about understanding student accounts on the financial dashboard. We're putting a list of additional resources down in the description, so if you want to find out more about something that I breeze over, check the links in the description and you might be able to find it. Since we're talking about just this tab, the financial tab on a student profile, and we're looking at the dashboard right here, let's cover how various financial roles interact with it. Financial admin and student billing users have the run of the place. The only important difference between the two roles when they view a profile's financial tab is that the financial admin gets options at the transaction level to void or reverse or both, depending on your settings, and to leave notes. So here's a transaction from the financial admin perspective. And then you can see I have void or reverse options up here. And then I have a box down here where I could enter and add notes. And here's the same transaction from the student billing perspective. They can access the transaction. They don't get the void and reverse options. They can see but cannot leave notes. The financial aid role can view the dashboard here, but can't actually do anything. Can't add charges, can't apply payments or anything like that. So that's roles. We're going to switch back to the financial admin perspective. Okay, so we're on a student's profile, financial dashboard. We're looking at a student who already has quite a lot going on here, as you can see. So what we're gonna do is flip over and look at somebody with a clean profile. And so you can see here, we've got financial dashboard and these various areas here, a lot simpler, but we want some history so we can actually see what goes on on the financial dashboard. First, let's get familiar with the basics. Um, right in the middle of the page here, we have a few tables of data. We've got unpaid invoices here. So these are invoices that haven't had money applied against them to completely satisfy the total amounts of those invoices. Then we've got unapplied payments and credits down here. This is money that's available to be applied against invoices, but is not currently applied. Then we've got a table with recent transactions down here. This is just a running list of transactions. It shows you the 20 most recent transactions for this student. Do you need to see transactions that are older than that? Too bad, we delete them. Just kidding, that would be horrible. You can see all transactions for a student going all the way back just by going over to history here. These two top tables are an itemized list of things that are currently open for the student. And then we've got, of course, the recent transactions. Let's look at that real quick on that cleaner account. And you can see unpaid invoices, unapplied payments and credits, recent transactions. Remember, we're attempting to understand student accounts. So you can get a good idea of what's going on with this account just by looking at these tables in the middle of the page here. We're going to look at the unpaid invoices table in a little more depth. We've got the invoice number in this column. So if you click into that, you can see what's on a given invoice. It could be just one charge there, or we go back and click on another invoice. It might be a group of tuition and fee charges. Then we have the amount column here. This is the total invoiced amount before any payments or credits have been applied. Then in the paid credited column, we can see for each invoice the amount of money or credit that has been applied there. You can see that on some of these invoices, we've got no money applied. And then on some of them, we've got some money applied. Obviously on none of them do you see the entire amount applied because they would no longer be unpaid and they just wouldn't show up here. It's just one of the services our software provides. The next column is the balance. That's the difference between the total invoice amount and the amount paid or credited. Easy for you finance folk to get your heads around, I'm sure. But then we've got a weird column here that's expected aid. Usually when the financial aid team sets up a disbursement, they will apply pending aid against a specific invoice. And that's what we're seeing right here. 
This is eventual money that will pay down this invoice over here. And that's why we then have the amount due. Isn't the balance the amount due? Well, yes, but because of the aid applied to this invoice that will get here eventually, there's no amount due on the invoice. Down at the bottom here, you've got a total rundown of everything that's going on for each column. So total amount, total amount paid, total balance, expected aid, total amount due. And then down below that, we've got unapplied money sitting here. Most institutions set things up so that this doesn't happen very often. Payments usually apply automatically against open invoices. As I mentioned, when your financial aid team sets up aid, they will often assign that aid to specific invoices. But you'll probably still have to manually apply payments at various points. This table here is fairly easy to understand. We've got payment date over here got the type, so you can see we've got customer payments and aid payments. We've got the reference column. This is just the payment number. It'll take you to details about the payment there. We've got the amount, the amount that's applied against an invoice or invoices there. And then we've got the amount still available to apply. That's digging into all of the details. But then over on the right here, we have a less detailed summary of what's going on with the account. Under the summary, we've got an overdue amount right at the top there. Obviously that's every amount on the invoice that's overdue all aggregated together there. Then we've got individual due dates here with their amounts. Then we've got the total amount due down here. So these are all the unpaid invoices totaled, everything that's left over, you can see it matches the balance column over there. But then we need to get to the pay now amount down here. That's the amount that the student actually needs to concern themselves with. This student has those unapplied payments and you can see that listed right there. They also have expected aid. That's scheduled aid again that has not yet been dispersed. So the student doesn't yet have that money, but it also doesn't make sense for them to pay money that they will be receiving once those disbursements go through. So you subtract unapplied payments and expected aid, and then that gives you the pay now amount right there. And then below pay now, you also get total balance. What does that mean? Remember that this student has that expected aid. It's not real money at this point, so it's not affecting their balance. So this is what they actually owe in terms of real money affecting their account. So pay now is kind of an interesting number. In terms of accounting, it's less accurate because it contains money that doesn't actually affect the student's balance in any real way, which is scheduled aid there. But from the student's perspective, it's more accurate because it's the money that they actually have to pay, assuming their financial aid comes through. And that pay now amount down here is the same amount that you see up here for that student when they click their make a payment button. And that's a rundown of how to understand what's going on when you look at the student financial dashboard. Don't forget to check the description for related resources. Do you wanna dig deeper and get more value out of Populi for your school? Join our Discord server. It's where Populi users can ask each other questions and capitalize on community knowledge. If you wanna become a part of that community, go to help in Populi and choose join the user community. That'll take you to a spot that has instructions about how you can get set up. I've been Josh for Populi and you've been great. Thanks for watching.